very, very important day, dear viewer, for you to be sitting again joining me in this wonderful lesson. And in this lesson, we are going to look at a topic in social studies that is about the foreign influence in Africa. Foreign influence in Africa. In this lesson, we are now going to look at the, the people who came who did not belong to Africa and they moved coming to Africa. But before we go to that, we are going to look at what do we mean by foreign influence? What do we mean by foreign influence? Or oh, what is foreign influence? So in the simplest definition, we shall be saying foreign influence refers to changes that were brought in by the foreigners. Foreign influence. refers to changes that were brought by foreigners. Of course, we are looking at changes that were brought to foreigners to Africa, which means we, are, we should be able to now understand these changes, but before we look at the changes, we are first of all going to understand what we call the foreigner, that is, if it is one. So, our next subheading, we shall be understand what we call a foreigner. So, when you are asked the question, who is a foreigner? The simplest way of defining a foreigner, you say a foreigner a foreigner is a person. A foreigner is a person who does not belong to a particular area. A person who does not belong to a particular area, who does not belong a person who does not belong to a particular area, or it can be a country. So that person who does not have that legal belonging to that area or that country or that continent, whichever the area, is the person that we shall call a foreigner. So we are going to look at what were these changes as we say that foreign influence refers to changes that were brought by the foreigners. We are going to look at what were these foreign changes. We are looking at examples of foreign influence. Or oh, what were the changes? Let's put them as changes. Changes brought in by foreigners. Which means we are going to look at which changes or which new things did this foreigners bring. So, number one, we are going to look at, we shall be saying, one, foreigners introduced, so we shall be cutting it short by saying introduction of new items of trade. Introduction of new items of trade. For example, when we come to look at the groups of foreigners, we shall be looking at, shall be having the foreign group that we call the traders. So which means, because of those ones, we had new items of trade coming into Africa. Then the other one, we shall be having introduction of new religions. New religions. So here we are having new religions coming to Africa which were not existing in Africa. For example, when we see when we talk about the Arabs, time will come when we shall be listing those foreign well foreign groups. When we talk about the Arabs, we shall be finding that these religions include what we call Islam and 
Christianity, Islam and Christianity. So we shall be able to find out that Islam was introduced by the Arabs, then we shall also be having Christianity which was introduced by the foreigners that we call missionaries. We shall be understanding them in the next few minutes. Then we also have what we call introduction of new culture. Introduction of new culture. Meaning that these people introduced new culture. Then we have introduction of of new styles of dressing. So we shall have that as a result of these people coming to Africa, new cultures were adopted, meaning they were introduced into Africa. Then also new styles of dressing. For example, we have this wearing of kanzus that was introduced by people like the Arabs and Africans also adopted that wear, I mean that dressing code, that dressing style. So you'll find that it also became another change that the foreigners brought, which was not in Africa. Then we have others. We are continuing giving these changes. We have what we call introduction of what we call Zebu Kato. Introduction of Zebu Kato. Now this Zebu Kato, we say these ones were introduced by the Arabs still. Then also, these very Arabs also introduced what we call what we call cowrie shells. Introduction of cowrie shells. Cowrie shells. Now this was acting as a, me I mean a medium of exchange of goods. Introduction of cowrie shells. So you will be finding that all these things that you have talked about before the coming of this of these foreigners, they were not happening in Africa. But before, I mean, when they came, they introduced or they brought those changes, and the people of Africa also learned them. We shall be adding, let's add introduction of new languages. Introduction of new languages to Africa. Meaning that before that, they are fine, we shall be having our languages that were spoken in Africa. But now when these people also came, when these foreigners also came, they also brought in theirs. For example, we shall be having a language we call Kiswahili. Then we can also have French, English, and others. So all these languages were introduced to Africa as a result of these foreigners coming to Africa. Then lastly, let me add introduction of introduction of new let's let's say new group of people or new groups of people. For example, we shall find that when these people came, some of them intermarried with the Africans. And as a result of the intermarriages, they were able to give rise to a new race or a new group of people. So, for example, we have the Arabs. For example, Arabs intermarrying. Intermarried with what we call the coastal Bantu. Arabs intermarried with the coastal Bantu, giving rise to what we call, giving rise to the people we hold, that we call the Swahili people. The Swahili people. So this is what we needed to have understood as we are continuing with our lesson.
We have looked at the meaning of foreign influence. We have said these are the changes that were brought in by the, uh, by the different foreign groups to Africa. And we have understood what a foreigner means. Then we have looked at these changes. Now, the, in the next thing, we are going to look at which were these groups or which were these foreigners? Who were these foreigners who came to Africa? So we are going to have it as groups of foreigners groups of foreigners who came to Africa. Groups of foreigners that came to Africa. So here we are going to share what are these or oh, who were these foreigners who came to Africa? This is something which is not new. We learned about this in the lower classes. So we shall be having groups like one. We shall have the group that we call traders. We shall have the group that we call traders. Meaning that these were people who were carrying out or who were interested in carrying out trade. Now, in this group, we are going to have very many subgroups here, including the Arabs. We shall be having the Arabs. Then we shall be having European traders. European traders. We have that one. We have the Indian traders. We have the Indian traders. Then we have what we call the Katumas. The Katumas. This one, we are looking at people who came from, like in Uganda, they came from, the, from, from north, that is from Sudan, coming southwards to Uganda, carrying out a trade with the people of northern Uganda. So these are the ones we call the Khartoumas. The Indians, the European, the European traders, then we have the Arab traders. Time will come when we shall be looking at these groups one by one in depth. But for now, let's continue giving other foreign groups. We say the first one, we, had, we have traders. So, two, we are going to have the group of foreigners that we call explorers. Explorers, please take serious note of the spellings. Explorers, we shall understand that one with time. Then three, we shall be having we shall be having the group that we call missionaries. Missionaries. Then we shall also have what we call the colonialists. Colonialists. These colonialists, we can also call them administrators. Administrators. Then finally, we shall be having those who came purposely to settle in Africa. We shall be calling them the settlers. So these are the foreign groups or groups of foreigners that came to Africa. Now, having looked at that, like I say, time will come when we shall be looking at them one by one. And for now, we want to say discuss something on the first group that is for traders now in this group like we have said we have the arabs we have the european traders we had the, the indian traders and the Khartoumas. we are going to start from the first one that is the arab traders arab traders Arab traders. So in the simplest understanding, we shall be saying that this Arab trader, like we have understood, they were traders, which means we are going to look at the people who came from Saudi Arabia. Of course, those are the Arabs. We shall be saying that these people came from Saudi Arabia. So we shall have their origin as Saudi Arabia. That is in the continent 
in the continent that we call Asia. Sometimes you can be asked this question. The question can ask for the country where they came from. The answer will be Saudi Arabia. Or if it asks for the continent, then you have to put Asia as a continent. Now, these people came from Saudi Arabia purposely to Africa to carry out what we call major reason. We can say major reason for coming. Major reason for coming. We, shall, we are saying purposely they came to carry out trade. But it does not make us or it, it does not limit us also from understanding other reasons as to why they came. Carrying out trade was the major reason. However, there were also other reasons as to why these people came to Africa. For example, we shall also be having other reasons apart from carrying out trade. We shall also be saying that since these were Arabs and they were Muslims, meaning that as they came, they were also interested in spreading their religion, and that is in Islam. And for us, we say in Uganda or in East Africa, Islam became the first foreign religion. You need to not, you need to quote me right. Islam was the first foreign religion to be introduced to into Africa, into East Africa. So that is one thing you need to note. Other, other, other reasons, apart from I mean, spreading Islam, these people were also interested in getting what we call slaves. They were also interested in getting slaves, that is to add on trade. But I say that the first foreign religion to be introduced to East Africa was Islam, but what you will find nowadays is that we have when we compare the number of Muslims in East Africa, or in Uganda, let's first talk about Uganda. When we compare the number of Muslims in Uganda with that of Christians, you will find that the Muslims are fewer compared to those in the Christian side. Now, we shall be able to give reasons as to why this is happening like that. Why do we have few Muslims, yet Islam was the first religion to be introduced into Uganda? So let's talk about Uganda. So here we shall be looking at factors like one, these Arabs, like we have said, for them they were majorly interested in carrying out trade. Which means that as they were in Uganda, as they were in East Africa or wherever, for them their major reason was carrying out trade. Spreading the religion was as a by the way. So you find that they could not win very many souls of the Ugandans. Then too, these ones, you know, with Islam, it, it involves a cultural, I mean, that, that religious practice of circumcision, which some Africans saw as a pain or a burden to them. Of course, for you to be a Muslim and a male, you have to be circumcised. So you could find that most of, I mean, some people in Uganda would fear circumcision as it is the gateway to, to Islam. So you will find that when now this Christianity came and it was like, come the way you are, you find that it was able to capture very many people. That is why we are having today very many Christians as compared to the Muslims. That was a bit of it that you needed to have known. Now let's go back to these people. We have said they came to East Africa from Saudi Arabia, and we, one thing we are going to look at is we had what we call the monsoon winds. Monsoon winds. We cannot do away without mentioning the monsoon winds, which helped the boats to blow the boats of these people across that Indian Ocean towards the East African coast. So those boats are the ones, I think this one blew the, the African, I mean the Arab boats that we shall be calling dogs. So another thing we need to note is this. A question can be asking you, what name was given to the boats 
that the Arabs were using sailing across the Indian Ocean towards the East African coast. So the answer will be the DOWS. D-H-O-W-S. That is the spelling. Then a question can also ask you, how important were the monsoon winds to these Arabs? Like I said at first, that these winds could help to blow, blow or moving the boats, these dogs, towards the East African coast. And at the end of it all, it was helping them to fasten their movement and they found themselves at the East African coast. So that is about, uh, that is about the monsoon wind. So that we can be able to continue with our discussion. So, we are continuing with our discussion and we are looking at foreigners who came to Uganda and we are looking at the Arabs as one of them and we have looked at where the Arabs came from. We say they came from Saudi Arabia, that is in the continent, that is called Asia. And we say it was the monsoon winds that helped them to blow their boats towards the East African coast. And we, also we, have, we have also understood the name that was given to those boats as the doors. So, we are now going to look at what did these people bring to Africa. Remember we said they were majorly traders, people who were, in, who were interested in carrying out trade. So we are going to look at which goods had they brought to Africa. Then we shall also look at what did they want from Africa. And we shall be continuing with our lesson. So, one of the things these Arabs brought were things like mirrors. We shall be having things like guns, mirrors, guns, clothes, shoes. We shall have others like cups, plates, and others that we may not be able to exhaust all. Then we also need to understand that which items of trade did these people want from Africa? For example, in Uganda, items of trade that the Arabs wanted from Africa. So, dear view, I want you to take serious note of these two headings. This one is giving us the items of trade that were brought by the Arabs to Africa. And these are the ones we have talked about. We have talked about mirrors, guns, clothes, shoes, cups, plates, and others. Now, on the other side, we also had some items that these people were interested in getting from Africa. And those are the ones you are going now to look at in this next heading. Items of freight that the Arabs wanted from Africa. So one, these Arabs wanted what we call slaves. Slaves. And when we talk about slaves, these are human beings who are to be sold and 
they, they use them. So why were slaves needed? Slaves were now needed to carry those other goods that they could get from Africa, from the interior to the coast where they had settled. Two, these people wanted also things like back cloth. They wanted things like ivory. Ivory, of course, this one is from the elephant, from the elephants. And sometimes we shall be asking you a question that how was how, how did the presence of Arabs in Africa lead to extinction of elephants? So you find that the, the elephants were now being killed in order to get ivory so that they could exchange it and the Africans could also get these things that the Arabs had brought. So these are some of the things. Then we can also add grains. We also have grains. These are the things that the Arabs were also interested in in Africa, among others. Let's add hides and skins. Hides and skins. So this is well these are the these are the goods or trade items that the Arabs wanted from Africa. The thing that you would be looking at would be would be looking at the effects. What were the effects of the Arab coming into Africa? So for the side of the effects, we shall be able to look at the effects in two ways. We shall have those good side, I mean the good effects, that we shall be calling the positive effects, and then we shall also be having the negative effects. So let's have let's look at that one in a nutshell, then we shall be able to call it a day. Say we are going to look at the effects of the coming of the Arabs. And I said effects, we are going to have it in two. We shall be having what we call the positive effects, and then we shall also be able to look at the negative effects. Now, positive effects, we are looking at how was the coming of the Arabs or oh, advantageous? How was it good to the people of Africa? One, we, sh we shall say that these Arabs. The Arabs introduced new trade items, new trade items into Africa, which means that before they came, Africa didn't have some of these items, like the guns, mirrors, clothes, and the rest. Then two. Apart from introducing new trade items, the Arabs also introduced what we call the Zebu cattle. Remember when we were writing about the, the changes that the foreigners brought, we talked about foreign cattle being introduced to Africa. That was by the, that one was, in, those ones were introduced by the Arabs. Then we shall also be having points like development. It led to the development of towns at the coast. Like I said at first, that these Arabs had come and had settled at the East African coast before entering the interior of East Africa. Which means that you would find that as they were coming to the interior, 
to collect some of these goods, they could carry them to the coast, meaning they had stayed there and they had established business there. So that one we say it led the development of towns at the coast. Let's look at examples of these towns. For example, we have towns like Mombasa, we shall have Sopala, we shall have a town like Malindi, and others, including Zanzibar. So those are the places that were introduced, I mean that were developed at the East African coast due to the presence of the Arabs. Then the other thing that we have to add here is that since these people entered Africa, the interior of Africa, it meant that they made Africa to be known to the rest of the world. So we shall say they opened Africa, they opened Africa to the rest of the outside world. They opened Africa to the rest of the outside world. Which means that these people made Africa to be known to the outside world. Then lastly, lastly, somewhere in our discussion we talked about new races or new people or new groups of people being introduced. So in our last point, we shall be saying that these Arabs intermarried with some Africans and that was able to give rise to a new race of people. So our last point on this positive effect, that was good of course. So we shall say the Arabs intermarried with a coastal bantu with a coastal bantu meaning there were Bantu tribes that were living along that coast. Intermarried with the coast of Bantu and this gave rise to giving rise to the people that we call the Swahili people. Giving rise to the Swahili people. So, these are some of the positive effects that we can be talk, I mean, that we can talk about at the moment. As we conclude, we also need to understand the other side. And there we are now going to look at the negative ones. The negative effects. Now, the negative effects, we are going to look at how was their coming bad? How did it lead to people suffering or others even dying? Of course, we have that one happening. So, the first thing we need to understand here is that these people, since they wanted slaves, of course, they introduced that system of what we call slave trade. The Arabs introduced the system of slave trade that we call the buying and selling of human beings, meaning that they were even able to have markets for people where others could take their fellow people to sell to, this, to these Arabs. So that was another, that was a, a very dangerous part of it. Then apart from slave trade, apart from them introducing slave trade, or oh, as a result of slave trade, this also led to reduction of people. We call it depopulation. The Arabs led to depopulation. And this one comes due to slave trade. The Arab coming into Africa led to depopulation. So let's understand this point. How did it lead to depopulation? So you will find that as these people were taking, as the Arabs were taking these people from Africa, of course when they come and take you from your home, you are going to carry goods where you get tired on the way, that's where you can where you can be left and automatically you may end up dying there. So you find that very many people were removed or were taken out of the country and that one reduced on the number of people in, that, in, the, in Africa. Then still in line with the slave trade, apart from depopulation, of course, it led to death. 
their coming also led to death of people. How? Of course, when you go, if they forced you to carry goods, when you fall sick on the way, you, there was no treatment given to you, you find that one could die, and as a result, you, you lose your life. Then, still in line with the slave trade, it led to what we call separation of families. Separation. The Arabs made people to get separated from their family members due to that system of slave trade. Then the other one, which is outside slave trade, is when we're looking at these people wanting ivory. So we shall be able to get a negative effect there that the Arab coming into Africa led to the reduction of elephants in Africa's game parks. So we shall say the Arabs led to, or the Arab, the Arab presence led to extinction, extinction of elephants in Africa's in Africa's game parks. In Africa's game parks. A point you need to note that people were now seriously killing the elephants in order to get what, I mean ivory, that they could exchange with the Arabs and they get goods that the Arabs had brought, like the guns, like the mirrors, the shoes, the clothes, and others, as we already finished to list them. So, for now, dear viewer, it has been so wonderful having you sharing with me this knowledge, and I must thank you so much for being a part of this lesson. Always keep on accessing more and more of these lessons, because there are already others that are there, and others are coming in the, in the nearby time. Thank you so much. Have a good day.